the invention of the microscope. In 1595, a father and son Dutch pair named Hans and Zacharias Janssen were eyeglass makers. They put several lenses in a tube and made a very important discovery. The object near the end of the tube appeared to be greatly enlarged, much larger than any simple magnifying glass could achieve by itself. His little tube ended up magnifying the object to around nine times the original size. In 1665, an English scientist named Robert Hooke published his book called Micrographia, which describes structures of insects, sponges, and plants at the cellular level. He became the first person to use the word cells. In 1674, a Dutch scientist named Anton van Leeuwenhoek used his knowledge of grinding lenses to create his own microscope. He was the first person to observe and describe single-celled organisms, which he originally referred to as animacules. We now refer to them as microorganisms. He was also the first to record and observe muscle fibers, bacteria, spermatozoa, and blood flow inside capillaries. In 1675, an Italian doctor named Marcello Malpighi published his book, Anatomia Plantarum, describing the internal anatomy of plants and animals. There are several structures named after him in your body, including part of your kidney. In 1931, German co-inventors Ernst Ruska and Max Knoll created the electron microscope. This microscope can magnify organisms up to a million times. The limitation is that the organism must be in a vacuum and so can't survive the process. In order to be able to use the light microscope in class, you first must know the parts of the microscope. You must always carry the microscope by the arm and the base at the same time. The oculars, or ocular, depending on the microscope, is the eyepiece. This usually has a magnification of 10 times just by itself. The objective lenses, typically there's three or four, are on a rotating nose piece and have various magnification levels. So to get your total magnification, you have to multiply the magnification of the ocular lens times the magnification of the objective lens. The stage is the flat platform where you place your slide. The light source is underneath the platform, and it shines light up through your slide. The diaphragm is a dial under the stage used to change the amount of light so you can make it brighter or dimmer. The course adjustment knob is the bigger knob. This is used to raise and lower the stage in order to focus your specimen to begin with. And then once you see your specimen, you can use the smaller knob called the fine adjustment knob in order to make slight focusing adjustments. When focusing your microscope, you must always follow these steps. Make sure the stage is on its lowest setting. Place the slide securely on the stage. Start with the lowest power objective lens. Scan the slide right to left and top to bottom on low power to get an overview of the specimen. Center in on the part of the specimen that you want to view in more detail. Now use the course adjustment knob to slowly bring the stage closer to the lens. Once the image is visible, you can use the fine adjustment knob to sharpen the image. Once the image is sharp, you can change to the next highest objective lens to zoom in. Use the fine adjustment knob to sharpen the image again. If you lose the image at any point, you have to start the process over. Once you see the image, do not move the course adjustment knob anymore. Use the diaphragm to adjust the lighting. A technique used to increase the resolution of a microscope is called oil immersion. This is achieved by immersing both the objective lens and the specimen in a transparent oil of high refractive index. Wet mount slides are used to view living organisms as well as liquid substances of all kinds. They are also used for any sort of specimen that needs to be kept moist. Observing microbes can be difficult because most of them are transparent, so scientists use dyes and stains. Simple staining uses basic, so a pH of less than 7, dyes, methylene blue, crystal violet, and malachite green. So what you do is you place the microbe on the slide and allow it to dry. 
This forms a smear. Saturate the smear with the basic dye for approximately one minute. You may use crystal violet, saffronin, or methylene blue. Rinse gently with water and blot dry with bibulous paper, which is basically just like a paper towel. Examine with the microscope. So in the picture you can see on the left, this was the organism with no stain, so it's very difficult to see. But on the right, once we've dyed it, you can now see the, all the structures. Differential stains are used to distinguish one group of bacteria from another. First we have gram staining. This was developed by Hans Christian Gram in 1880. This stain will identify either gram positive or gram negative bacteria because they have a difference in their chemical structure in their cell wall. Acid fast stains are used to stain a small group of organisms that don't readily uptake stains. Mycobacterium genus, for example, are one species that causes tuberculosis and another causes leprosy. These have to use acid fast stains. So the steps of the gram staining process. First, you apply your crystal violet, which is a purple dye. So this turns the cells purple. Then you apply the iodine. The cells still look purple. Then you wash it with alcohol. The gram positive cells stay purple, but the gram negative cells are now colorless. Then you apply the safranin. The gram positive cells still remain purple, but the gram negative cells appear red. So under a microscope, your gram negative cells look red, as you see on the left, and the gram positive cells look purple, as you see on the right. 